Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, and this time it is going to be an updated Dragoonity combo tutorial for Master Rule 5 post-April 1st, 2020 Forbidden and Limited list. What happened on that list? We no longer have access to Destrudo, and we can't use Steam for our combos. Now, a few weeks ago I put out a combo on the channel of doing a board of a Morphage Lechery plus a Morphage Goliath and two negates at minimum, utilizing, you know, Steam in the combo sequence to tribute Hieratic Seal of Heavenly Spheres to continue the combo sequence moving and get a lot of resources. Well, turns out, I figured out how to do the exact same board without Steam in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> and it's actually a better board, meaning that we never actually needed to use Steam, and it was just flashy and extra. And wasn't needed at all, which is kind of interesting, kind of sobering. I blame the fact that it was very flashy and it's what I got used to doing during Master Rule 4 because making its hum was a lot harder and making seal and uh, tributing it for steam was just the easy go-to. And then it just became a flashy extender once we were able to make its hum and then step up into Hieratic Seal of Heavenly Spheres. But turns out if you actually omit steam from the process, you make the combo more resource efficient, you make it easier to adapt the combo based off cards you've drawn, it makes it easier and gives more widely scoping combo variations of what the three cards you can open are for it to um, to be possible. It ends on a better board because instead of having a floating Ascalon or Barca just chilling, just taking up extra space, you actually get Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon on the board alongside Darkness Metal, the Dragon of Dark Steel, uh, alongside this Goliath, which is at 2750, this Lechery that's preventing your opponent from doing spells, uh, and then these two negations. And then on top of that, this combo is accidentally future-proofed for the Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon errata that Japan is getting very soon. Now, we don't know when we're getting that errata. It could be a couple months. It could be a few years. They're very inconsistent in terms of scheduling when, when we get erratas, and it's not an official errata for us in the TCG until the Konami database updates it, which is most often accompanied by them announcing a reprint of the card. So there is a physical printing of the card with the new text for you to go after. Especially since Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon is getting its errata in the OCG with a very cool looking new artwork. Until we have that information, I'm playing with Red Med the way it was already, you know, established, the way it was already intended. I'm using this card as many times a turn as possible. But this combo is actually accidentally future-proofed. This extra Darkness Metal effect is not needed for the combo to perform, and I will show you in the combo how you can alter just one simple step to make it to where if you're playing with the new errata of Darkness Metal, this combo is completely possible even over in Japan territories, in OCG land. But before I show you this combo, if you're new here, I'd like to ask you to subscribe. If you like this video and you want to see a Master Rule 5 Dragoonity deck profile, let's see if we can get this video to 500 likes. I will put it, the video out as soon as possible. If you want to see a deck profile for this, make sure to like the video. If you do not like the video, I'm going to assume you do not care about seeing a deck profile, so I will not make it in any sort of hurry but with that out of the way if you are interested in live streams that i do on twitch link is down below to my twitch page if you want to go follow that get notified next time i go live where i play Yu-Gi-Oh and talk with viewers and talk Yu-Gi-Oh theory and stuff as well as if you're interested in my channel's discord server link to that is in the description as well but with that out of the way let me clean this up and show you how we got here. All right, so similarly to the last video, I'm gonna be showing you a three card combo, but it is a very flexible three card combo to get us to our ending board. What I'm gonna show you is the card combination of Synodus plus Dragon Ravine plus Dark Worm. However, you should just, you know, understand that you could have a lot of different variations of this combo. You could have Synodus plus Tuner plus any way to trigger Dark Worm, so like Dragon Shrine or Foolish, or you could have just a slew of different extenders. Any level four extender, or level 6 dragon extender. Effectively, you just need to be able to make a Tum with Gaydurg being used on the way to a Tum. So, Garuda is a good one, Monster Reborn is a good one, Mistletin is a clear-cut one, and then you also have Goldsark and Tempest as options because of the fact that we're not using Tempest in this combo sequence like we did in the last one. Being the fact that we're not using Tempest means that we could have things like Goldsark adding either Mistletin or a Tuner off of the Tempest that we banish, or if you have Tempest, you're able to make Gaydurg add Garuda, discard Tempest, banish Tempest for Garuda, and then get a Mistleton and go from there into the combo sequence. But what I'm going to be showing you is just 
simple these three cards uh there's even like other weird variations and permutations of this combo of uh of like summoner monk plus spell plus senatus where uh or summoner monk plus spell plus tuner rather where you go summoner monk discard the spell summon senatus from your deck and then senatus discards the tuner that's in your hand and that's full combo as well but this is the one that i'm going to show you simply because i like ones that involve dragon ravine specifically even though senatus kind of invalidates a lot of what ravine is needed for but anyway so this one, activate Dragon Ravine, we're going to discard the uh, Dark Worm, and we're going to add, I'm going to add Coos in this instance, even though there's no real difference between adding Coos or Phalanx here. I'm specifically going to play out this combo in a way to show you that you don't need as many Phalanxes to do this combo as you may think. You in fact only need one Phalanx in circulation amongst all of your tuners to make this play completely possible and completely viable. Uh, so it's actually really interesting. So like, even though this could be Phalanx and I could get multiple Phalanx in circulation, I'm going out of my way to not do so, just to show you what's up. But so, in this case, because uh, Dark Worm is my extender, I'm going to summon it. It doesn't matter if you had Gate Zero or not, because it's not a dragon, it's a fiend. I wish it was a dragon, it being uh, something to discard for a Gator, very relevant, but unfortunately, not the case. Anyway, uh, Gate Zero is more relevant if you start with like Dragon Shrine Ravine, because you can discard the Gate Zero for a Ravine after summoning Dark Worm. But anyway. Normal Summon Senatus, discard your tuner, and use that to get access to a Phalanx from your deck. You 100% want to equip Phalanx because you need one Phalanx in circulation at minimum. You're going to special the Phalanx here, going to Synchro with the Dark Worm and the Phalanx into our first six, Dragoonity Knight Luin. Now this takes any generic level 4 plus a Dragoonity Tuner. So again, this could just you just need a level 4 extender or a level 6 dragon extender so that you can make Gator and then have the level 6 dragon so you can make a ton. But Luin on summon is going to re-equip a tuner. You're going to special that tuner and you're going to synchro with Synodus into your Dragoonity Knight and Gator. Now Gator is going to add and discard Blackwing Zephyros the Elite. Put it from your hand from your deck to your hand and from your hand to the graveyard. And then from here, you are going to overlay these into a rank 6, into Hieratic Dragon King of Atum. Now, Atum is going to specifically detach uh, Gaederg, so that you can summon Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon from our deck. And then Darkness Metal is going to revive the Gaederg. Now, from here, we're going to change the sequencing of how we do the combo. Previously, we would be adding and discarding Steam, we'd be making the Hieratic Seal Celestial Spheres, doing all the weird, you know, flashy stuff. But we actually just don't need that flashy stuff in the deck anymore, and we didn't need it to begin with. It was just something that was hard-coded in my mind of, this is good for getting resources into play. Um, so, like, that's why I went with it, but you actually just don't need to do it. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to bounce the Darkness Metal to my hand to special summon the Zephyros from the graveyard, take 400 damage. And then from here, I'm going to use the Gaederg's effect to add a level 4 or lower Dragon or Winged Beast and then discard a Dragon or Winged Beast from our hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a Morphage Lechery from deck to hand. And we have this Darkness Metal in our hand, which is going to get discarded. Uh, so basically this fulfills the uh, purpose of like the Tempest in the old combo. Because Tempest would get the search for a card that we discard off Gaederg, and we'd be keeping the Darkness Metal in circulation on the board. But this is actually just weirdly enough better. <laughs> <laughs> it's very strange. But anyway, so from here we're going to link away these two, the Gaederg and the Atum. We're going to link them away into our Dragoonity Knight Romulus. Now Romulus is going to trigger on summon, giving us Divine Lance from deck. Now we're going to equip the Divine Lance to the Romulus, and the Divine Lance is going to equip Koos from our deck. Now at this point we have two Koos and one Phalanx in circulation, because that's specifically what I started with to show you that you only need the one Phalanx. But so from here, special summon the Koos, and then we're going to Synchro, treating it as a 4 with the Zephyros, per its ability, into Dragoonity Knight Barka. Now Barka here has three uh, tuners to equip, so it'll equip double Koos and one Phalanx from Grave. Those are the only tuners that are in our graveyard to equip here. And then we're going to start special summoning them and uh, committing them to our board. Now, the interesting thing is, is that our board is very clean. And it doesn't, you wouldn't think that, you know, it would step up very efficiently into, you know, a big ending combo sequence, but it actually just does. So, from here, we're going to special summon Phalanx into this specific zone. You always want it either here, or if you're working in reverse on the board, you want it, you want it either here or here. These are the two zones you want it in, because you want the one Phalanx to be able to be made into either Crystal Wing or Borlode Savage Dragon. The Kooses don't allow you to make those cards. So you want to put the Phalanx where it doesn't have to be used to get it out of the way. Uh, but then from here, going to Special Summon the two Kooses, and then we are going to link away one Koos into 
Guard Dragon Pisty, and then we are going to link the Barka, because it has no equips left on it, and the Romulus into Triple Burst Dragon. So this opens up our zone for Pisty to be utilized. So we're going to use Pisty's effect, and here's the point where if we're playing with Darkness Metal as it's eroded in Japan, this is the point where the combo is future-proofed for that, because if you're playing with errata Darkness Metal, which we don't have in the TCG yet, and we don't have a confirmed date of when we're getting that errata, you just summon the Gaydurg back under the Pisty, and it's no big deal. But as long as we're playing with broken Darkness Metal, we're going to summon the Darkness Metal back off Pisty. But just keep in mind, this combo is accidentally future-proofed. Instead of summoning the Darkness Metal here, you can just summon the Gaydurg back, and it makes literally the most minute difference to your ending board. But so from here, we're gonna link the Pisty and the Triple Burst Dragon into the good old friendly jump promo, the card that is going to be a worldwide card in Battles of Legend, because this card is coming out in Battles of Legend. So if you're in Europe or other territories that aren't in A, then you'll be able to play with this card soon. Darkness Metal, the Dragon of Dark Steel, effectively another Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon equivalent. And it's really cool because we get to end on both of these with the board as it currently stands. But so from here, now that our board is opened up, going to use Red Eyes Darkness Metal's effect, summoning the Gaiderg, and since we linked away with the Pisty, we are able to use Gaiderg for a very good value of adding Mist Valley Baby Rock from our deck to our hand, and then discarding the Baby Rock, which then special summons itself as a level 2 tuner that's going to be used for that purpose. So, we're going to synchro the Baby Rock and the Gaiderg here away into our Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, because we just, you know, want to start stepping up into our ending synchro plays. And then from here, we are going to link the Coos, because the Flanks is off, you know, chilling out of the way, into Guard Dragon LP, which shares a mutual zone with Darkness Metal, the Dragon of Dark Steel. And we have just a couple more steps to go. All we have to do from here is we have to use Darkness Metal, the Dragon of Dark Steel's ability, which is once per turn, you can revive a monster from your graveyard to a zone it points to in defense position, so you can't revive links and you can't Link Summon for the rest of the turn. The card that you summon's effect is negated, and it goes to the bottom of the deck when it leaves the field. So you could revive Mistleton here, but in this combo, Luin is a tuner, so you don't want to revive Luin, because then you can't synchro with it and Phalanx. So Gaiderg is more than willing to fill the entire role, and more than capable of it. But so from here, use Darkness Metal to revive the Gaiderg. You synchro away the Gaiderg and the Phalanx that's left over into Borload Savage Dragon. Borload Savage Dragon gets to equip the biggest link in our graveyard at this point in time, which is Triple Burst Dragon, which gives it three counters and gives it an attack boost of uh, 1,200, so it's 42. Not small at all. And then from here, you can put a Morphage Lechery in your scale and use Guard Dragon LP's effect to summon a dragon from our deck to the zone that both Darkness Metal and LP point to, which is going to be our Amorphage Goliath at full 2750 stat line. So... What we effectively have is we have a better ending board than what we were doing with Steam. It is a better resource utilizing combo because the old combo required 12 cards minimum out of your extra deck to perform it because you had to step through the Hieratic Seal and you had other weird things you wanted to play to make that combo more, you know, useful in like varying combo like uh, hand variations. But with this one, this combo that I just showed you only used 11 extra deck cards, so it's already better off than the old combo. And it uses less cards in your main deck because you don't have to, you know, utilize Tempest. Meaning if you draw Tempest, it's not the end of the world. Whereas in the old combo, you're using Steam. If you drew Tempest, then you had to figure out what you were going to alter about the combo. This one's a lot more clear cut, a lot more concise. And it's also just a better ending board as long as you're, you know, playing with pre errata Red Med in the TCG. Japan doesn't even have this card printed yet, as far as I'm aware, in their eroded form. And who knows when we're getting it. It doesn't matter until we get it. But like I said, if we are playing with post errata Red Med, the only thing that changes about the ending board is that Red Med is no longer on it because you just revive Gaiderg with the uh, with the Pisty instead of Red Med to bring back Gaiderg. So what that means is that actually, if you chose to, you could choose not to summon Red Med. And if you had something like a uh, like a Mistleton or whatever, or like a free special summon, you could actually commit further to the board of like making another level eight synchro, making like a second Crystal Wing, and then making Borderless Savage with the Mistleton. Um, like, or just making like a Stardust Dragon or something in this spot. Like this is actually expandable. Uh, past the point of what I'm showing you here, but this is generically really good because 
Your opponent cannot activate spells or spell effects. You can't either, but you don't care about that. The Goliath, they can't summon from the extra deck in any way, shape, or form until they kill this 2750 stat line. Killing this is also what's going to turn spells back online for them, but you're just going to prevent them from doing that. You're going to negate monster effect with Crystal Wing and negate anything that's relevant with Warlord Savage Dragon. So you can negate an evenly matched with this, or you can negate another monster effect with this. Uh, but basically, this is a really, really strong board for follow-up because look at this. This is just big dragons, just big beefy boys. So that's the essence of this combo. There's obviously a lot of little tweaks and modifications you can do as far as the different you know, play lines for going into it. Um, the different openers that do it, like Sinatus Tuner and uh, Baby Rock is one that's a different weird combination. There's a lot of different little things and little nuanced plays that you can go into for uh, how to change this around. But this is hilarious how banning Steam actually made the combo better because it improved the ending board. But that's pretty much all I wanted to talk to you about today, all I wanted to show you. And let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. As I have already said, if you're new here, subscribe. I'd love to welcome you on board. If you don't know that I stream and you want to catch my live streams where I play Yu-Gi-Oh! Talk Theory with people and all that sort of stuff, link is in the description to my Twitch page, Phoenix Live. Go over there, follow it, enable notifications so you don't miss the next live stream. And if you're interested in my Discord server, then definitely go down there in the description. There's a link to that as well. If you're interested in any of those things, the resources are there for you to use them. And other than that, if you want to see an MR5 deck profile for this, like I said, if this video gets at least 500 likes, then I will put it out as soon as I possibly can. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, as I've already said. Thanks for your time, as usual, and take care. I will see you in the next video.